Hello, this is Dr. Matthews. Today we're going to discuss the relationship between levers and the biological system, especially the human. First we talk about is a first class lever. It's designed so that you have a load and then the fulcrum in the middle and then the effort. Example, using a crowbar, scissors, or lifting your head off your chest are examples of this. It's considered to be a power lever and it operates at a mechanical advantage. In other words, less effort is required compared to the small effort of the weight being lifted. Not all first class levers have a mechanical advantage, but they're better at controlling power moves. Uh, for instance, if you take a crowbar, you can pick up something much heavier than you can if you just uh, try to pick it up by hand. Now, here are some examples you can see that the load and the force and the fulcrum, a hammer pulling out a nail, you can't pull it out by hand, a pair of pliers, or lifting your head back. Second class lever is put in the order of fulcrum, load, and effort. A good example is a wheelbarrow, effort at one end, lever and load at the other. Also, raising yourself up on your toes is another example power lever as the load is nearer the fulcrum than the effort. It's much, much easier to have a load in a wheelbarrow than it is to pick it up by hand. And this gives a mechanical advantage when you're trying to stand up on your toes. A class two lever is very significant in its mechanical advantage. A third class lever we have load, effort, and then fulcrum, and these are at a mechanical disadvantage. A great effort is required to lift a small load. Tweezers are a good example. Flexion at the elbow, such as during the bicep curl, is another example. It's not a powerful movement. It can be done quickly and through a range, large range of motion. So here we have the example, class three, the elbow is considered the fulcrum, and you have the effort by the biceps and the load in your hand. We have a few other terms we haven't discussed yet when it comes to muscles. An agonist is also called the prime mover. It is the muscle most responsible for the movement, such as in the last picture, the biceps brachii was the one causing the movement of the arm. Antagonist is the opposing muscle, which allows, which relaxes to allow the agonist to bring about movement, such as the triceps during the biceps curl. A synergist is a muscle which assists the agonists, often at the beginning or the end of the movement when the force is the greatest. A fixator is any muscle that prevents movement at the joints other than those intended. Uh, postural muscles during a biceps curl keeps you upright instead of falling over from the weight. Now this is not affecting the actual elbow, it's the back muscles. Uh, that's all I have today and I thank you. The end.